Praise the Lord. Uh, we have a scripture reading from Amos 3, verse 3. That was just introductory. If you'll forgive me for making a text of pretext this morning. Yes, Amos 3, Amos 3 verse 3, but that won't be the first time. Uh, God has, uh, is touching us. And just think about a walk. How many of us enjoy walking before I pray? <laughs> <laughs> not, not right now, right? Minus 11 and all these things. But to walk, it, it's equating walking with experience, coming from a Bible perspective. To walk is to live. And in this last day and age, in these last and evil days, seeing is not believing. And I'm just here to warn us, uh, to remind us that walking is. Walking is believing. Uh, finish this. Uh, there shall be a still small voice saying, this is the way, what? Walk ye in it. If you recognize the way, but you don't walk in it, what good is that, right? So we're being called to walk. Uh, seeing is not believing. Walking is. Let's pray briefly before we begin. Father in heaven, as we open your word, we pray that you would open our hearts. And Lord, send, send your spirit to each one of us, Lord, to comfort, to afflict, to guide. Whatever it is that you're saying to us as individuals and also as a church, Lord, please speak it through this uh, broken vessel. We pray in Jesus' name that we would be touched and more devoted to you and that lives would be changed, not only ours, but those around us. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Amos 3 and verse 3, very simple verse. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Walking in this scripture is agreement. Walking together in agreement with God. Walking with Jesus. How many of us enjoy walking with Jesus Christ? You're looking forward to that walk around the crystal, uh, crystal stream? You don't have to wait. You know, you can do that now. Our everyday life is a walk with Jesus Christ. I think of all the scriptures about walking in the Bible. Uh, the road to Emmaus, what, what were they doing? They were walking, right? And then they have a, a visitor that comes that they don't recognize as Jesus Christ himself. Someone is talking about Jesus, opening up the scriptures about Jesus Christ to give them hope that they had lost. And there came a fork in the road, and they begged this person to stay with them, and they found out later that that was Jesus Christ himself. What we were talking about in Sabbath school earlier, uh, I thought about how we don't recognize when God is closest to us. That moment for Christ would have been at the cross, but the Father enveloped himself in darkness and was there. Uh, he would never turn his back on his son. But from Jesus, his perspective, he was alone. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We, we worship a God that in the beginning he came in the cool of the day. He's not static. He came and, and walked with Adam, did he not, and taught him. We have a culture in the Middle East that the teachers, they would walk with their pupils. They would walk and talk. And I, I sometimes do that when I'm dealing with uh, young people who can't sit still. I say, let's go take a walk. And we talk about the Bible. And they're able to get it, uh, some, get it a little better than they could just sitting still in a classroom. So anybody probably need to take a walk right now with me? <laughs> let's take a walk in our, in our minds. Let's take a walk in our Bibles to John chapter 6. John chapter 6 talking about this idea of walking and examining our walk to see whether or not we are in the faith. This is something I have to do. Where am I headed? Where am I headed? Where are we headed as a church? Where are we walking? The title of our message today is Old for a Closer Walk. That's uh, one of my favorite hymns. I, got, I have a lot of favorite hymns. Uh, we're going to be singing another one of my favorite hymns at the end of this talk. But uh, that's hymn 315, uh, Old for a Closer Walk. What a beautiful uh, hymn. How many of us want that closer walk? I surely want it today. Are you in John chapter 6? John chapter 6, beginning at verse 63. This is Jesus speaking. And he says something, and I often, I pray that I don't say anything to unnecessarily offend someone. But Jesus would he be guilty of doing that? No. But he says something that offends some people, and it has a, an immediate result. 
John chapter 6 opens up with Jesus being chased. You know what that means to chase after Jesus? You know, people chasing after him by land and sea. They're hopping on boats. They go to a place they expect to see Jesus, and they don't, and they don't stop. Is that a good thing? That's a great thing to be able to not stop because the devil will put obstacles and crowds and people in your way, but Jesus open up, he opens up doors. He'll open up a roof to let a paralytic in to, get, to hear the word of God. There's always something in the way of you and this word. I don't know if it's Facebook or, or some gadget or your time being pulled away from you into other subjects, but the devil always wants to play something between you and this word. And those who search after God with all their hearts, they're promised to find him. You have the paralytic coming in, his four friends, uh, through the roof. You have Mary, even though she's going to be scorned and, and talked about, she continues to press through the crowd and, 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 and seek after Jesus Christ. And so you had people doing this in the opening chapter of John chapter 6, they're, going, they're coming by land, by sea. They're running after Jesus. But something happens at the end where most of them end up running from Jesus. John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. The Bible says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, quickeneth or it brings life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also walk away? You don't think that something would drive a disciple. What does it mean, that word disciple mean? It's a follower. If I'm following someone, is it easy to follow someone that's standing still? Jesus is not standing still. This means that he moves, and sometimes he goes in areas that we don't want to go. We're called, like you said, Deb, to follow the lamb wherever he goes. And man, he goes in some rough places. You want me to go there? And that's what that song is about. But he doesn't call us to go anywhere that he hasn't gone. Remember that he's there. And because he's gone through it, we can go through it as well. But Jesus mentioned something that they could not get around. And it says that they forsook him and walked with him no more. Have you ever had an opportunity to walk away from Jesus Christ? I'm glad the story doesn't end there. And for those who believe in once saved, always saved, I would just say that the devil has a way of turning up the heat. The more intently you try to follow Jesus, the, the, worse, uh, the worse the reaction is from Satan's kingdom. He wants to make that the hardest thing that you'll ever try to do and will send situations that God allows to test what direction you're heading in. I haven't lost my place. We're in verse 67, 68, somewhere in there. I think of orientation and proximity. I think I illustrated that before. Uh, one time I took a wrong turn, and when you're, when you're going in the wrong direction and you think you're going in the right direction, are you getting closer to where you want to go or further away? Until you realize you're going in the wrong direction, and it, the Immediately when you realize that, guess what? You're going the right direction. You may have gone 100 miles in the wrong direction, but as soon as you turn around, you realize you've made a mistake, and you turn around, you say, Lord, forgive me. Even though you seem further away in proximity, you're just as close to God as you always were because you turned back toward him. I'm glad we serve a God who recognizes orientation above proximity. But these people were clamoring for Jesus, walking with him. He had just fed the 5,000, and he said something about drinking his blood and eating his flesh. They didn't quite understand what he was talking about, but he was talking about spiritually accepting his teachings. And they walked away from him. Verse 68, 
After the question is asked, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe. I want you to stress that word, believe, because believing is walking. Saying you believe is one thing, but actually believing involves your walk. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I pray that that be your answer. Where else are you going to go? Becky, if this is not what it's about, where will you go? There's nowhere else to go. Jesus has the words of eternal life. Will you also walk away? I reflect on this so much because the devil makes it convenient for, the, for you to walk away and inconvenient for you to stay. You don't believe in climate change. It's a real thing, especially when it comes to this devil. When it comes to him turning up the pressure and the heat on Christians, he literally did that, put people on the stake. When the heat is turned up, will you still follow him? Would Jesus lead you to some place that would make this a hard decision for you? Why wouldn't he just lead you to green pastures? Isn't that what the shepherd does in Psalm chapter 23? What about those green pastures? But he also says what? Yea, though I walk through the, shadow of the, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? doesn't say because he is with me, because you are with me. No longer talking about the shepherd, we're talking to him, because there's no one else who understands our grief or our pain. And I want to just remind us, hang on in there. Just enjoy that walk with Christ. It's a lovely walk. It's a very lovely walk. Well, people have seen the miracles, and they've chosen to walk away from Jesus Christ. What will you do after you've seen the miracle? First of all, the miracle of your own conversion. You know, the miracle of people that he's touched in your life. How he's healed and how he's given sight to the blind, spiritually speaking. How could you walk away after seeing all these miracles? Doesn't make sense. I remind us again that the chapter began with people chasing him and it ends with them running from him. What would it take for you to walk away from Jesus Christ? And we sit here in this climate controlled uh, beautiful church and we say nothing. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. But what happens tomorrow? What happens two weeks from now? Is that inoculation that you receive, is it losing its effect? Uh, What's the word? Efficacy. Thank you. I get trembled up. I get kind of confused up here sometimes with my, my language. Is the inoculation, that saving inoculation that Jesus Christ gave you, is it losing its efficacy with the passage of time? I want us to turn to Romans chapter 1. This is a, a kind of just added on basically what we were talking about this morning, walking with Jesus Christ. How do we know that we're walking with him? And while you're turning there, I might add that was Judas one of these ones who walked away in John chapter 6? But where was his heart? He was already gone. Don't worry about people that aren't physically here. You know, sometimes Jesus can, he can have us in a corner where he needs to speak to us, where we may be seen geographically distant from the church, but we could be right on cue with him. And people sitting right here could be gone from the kingdom. It's not a matter of location. That's, that's real estate. But when it comes to salvation, it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. You remember uh, there was a blind man in John chapter 9. And we are turning to Romans 8. But there was a blind man in John chapter 9 who ended up losing his membership. He got kicked out of the church. You remember that? Because he was professing. He had the nerve to profess and proclaim the one who gave him sight. And they, the Pharisees, wanting to control, control everything, set him up, asked him all these questions. First they asked his parents. They punked out and said, go ask him, because they were scared of getting kicked out of church. They ask him question after question. He kind of gets fed up. He said, look, I don't know about all that. All I know is I once was blind, but now I see. 
No one could argue that. And no one can argue your testimony about what Jesus Christ has done for you. So they put him out. He's out of the synagogue. But who comes up to talk to him? Who finds him? It's Jesus Christ. Those are in the synagogue away from Jesus. He kicks this man. They, this man is kicked out, but Jesus comes and talks to him and deals with him personally and assures him that he has been saved. So I don't get hung up in location because sometimes church membership and connection with Christ, they don't, they don't mean the same thing. So I pray for our brothers and sisters who, I'm not talking about people who are not here. I'm talking about people who are really struggling and are not members of our church right now. And someone mentioned this morning that because of the way things are happening, that they seem like they suspended their walk with Christ, but they will come back in when things are being revealed. But Romans 8 verse 1 is beautiful. It's an answer to the struggle of the man in Romans 7 who was walking alone trying to accomplish great spiritual feats without the aid of the Holy Spirit. But he then finds the answer and the solution to his issue in Romans 8 and verse 1. Well, let's back up to the last verse of chapter 7. It says uh, in verse 25 of chapter 7, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. 8 verse 1, there is therefore how much? No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Don't know what kind of Bible you have, but some of your Bibles, that it stops right there. And it's up to you to figure out what it means to be in Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be in Christ? I may feel like I'm in Christ, but the Bible tells us what it is. Who walk not after the flesh, but what? After the spirit. That walk, Jesus was led up of the spirit to be tempted of the devil. Who wants to be led up like that? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to take total control of your walk? It's not always green pastures. Sometimes it's the valley of the shadow of death. Thankful that we can walk in the spirit. And I'm not going to preach long, and I'm going to call for us to, if we don't mind, to kind of gather together in groups and pray. If you're not comfortable with that just get in a group and allow someone else who is to pray and what we're praying for is the outpouring of the holy spirit we're praying for the outpouring of the holy spirit and to make clear what he would have us to do as individuals and as a church as we attempt to walk with him and to invite others on that walk i've seen the miracles i can't turn back there's nowhere else to go there's nothing like jesus christ there's no doctrine there's no religion there's nothing that gives us what we give. We have a God who is willing to come down through the person of Jesus Christ and live out a perfect life and die for us. No, no one else even comes close to this beautiful story that we have and what Jesus Christ have done, has done for us. And through the power that he gives us to walk in newness of life. So we want to pray about that. We want to pray about that. I think I have one more scripture that we want to look at. I want to remind us of the, you know, the political pressure that we find ourselves under right now. The climate, this global pandemic, or whether you think it's a pandemic or whatever you want to call it, it's affecting the world. It's affecting the world. And I want us to remind us that seeing is not believing. The devil can do miracles and do wonderful things. The 5,000 fed and the loaves and the fishes and the healings, is that all that we're in this for? Because the enemy can mimic those things. He can do wonderful miracles. And seeing is not believing. I mean, seeing is not believing, but walking is. For those who are truly walking with Christ, they will not be led astray. They will not be fooled. They will not be misled. I want to read Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. I pray this be a part of uh, each one of our lives and our walks. Romans 8. And the question was, will you also walk away? What would make you walk away from Jesus Christ? The pleasures of sin for a season? Moses said, no, that's not worth it. 
I'd rather endure affliction with the people of God than have that. Would it be a, a, a heavenly palace, I mean a great palace? You know, Abraham said, you know, I, I know, I'm, I'll wait on a better country. But Jesus Christ, he was offered the world. Remember that? But what, if you only, what, bow down and worship me? This is what Lucifer told Christ. You don't think he would try to buy you off with that? If he did that to our Savior? He's our example in all things, Jesus is. Romans 8, what would separate you? from where God would have you to be. Verse 38, Romans 8. Romans 8. I, I will ask someone from the audience to read that. Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. Can we huddle together and pray for people that that would become uh, practical in their lives? Not only in ours, but in theirs as well, that nothing would separate us, separate them from the love of Christ Jesus, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Christ our example, who came from heaven to earth to die, not just any death, the death of a cross. You can't get any lower than that. And they buried him in a grave. And because he went through all that, he's going to be exalted. He gets a name that is above every other name. And as, our, as being his brother, we get to celebrate that as well. And we will be exalted in due time. But there's going to come inducements. There's going to come uh, offers. There's going to come suffering in your life that's going to attempt to separate you from the love of God. Let's pray that that not happen. Let's pray that we would enjoy our walks with Jesus Christ from here until eternity. So I'm going to ask that we come together and pray.